So they give you um, select x values, 1 through 6 in this case. Then they give you f of x, f prime of x, g of x, and g prime of x. And they give you um, those select values. We don't know what the function f of x is. We don't know what the function g of x is or what the derivatives are. But we do know these select values about it. And then they're going to ask us, all right, so let's say here's this new function, h of x. And the first example is that h of x is equal to f of x plus g of x. And they want us to find h prime of 4. So what we just, well, all we need to do is we need to say, well, okay, i got to find the derivative of h of 4. Well, let me start by expressing what the derivative of h is. If h is the result of a sum, then it's just the sum of their derivatives. So h prime of 4 is equal to f prime of 4 plus g prime of 4. And those values are going to go, come straight off of our table. f prime of 4 is 1 half. g prime of 4 is negative 1. So 1 half plus negative 1 is negative 1 half. <laughs> Okay, so these are super, super easy questions, guys, that y'all should be able to get. I mean, they should be very few points for you, okay? It's just you've got to recognize what the rule is and then be able to pull the values off the table. All right, so let's say here's a new definition for h of x. Let's say that it's negative 5 times f of x. That's our constant multiple, our scalar multiple rule. So h prime of x is negative 5 times f prime of x. So h prime of 3 is simply negative 5 times f prime of 3. And f prime of 3 is 2. You just got to be careful that when you're looking at your table, you don't, you're looking at the right column and, and all that good stuff. And I'm going to write all over these tables. I'm just trying not to make them too cluttered because uh, I don't know what I'm going to need to use in the future. Okay. Uh, the last one, the last definition for h of x there, 4 times g of x squared. Okay, so we've got a scalar multiple of 4, and we've got the power chain rule. Okay, so h prime of x is equal to 4 times, bring down the exponent, keep the function inside the same, subtract 1 from the exponent, we've got to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is g prime of x in this case. Any questions about the general rule there for that one? And of course, yes, 4 times 2 is 8. So h prime of 6 is equal to 8 times g of 6 times g prime of 6. So g of 6 is 3. g prime of 6 is 2. So we've got 8 times 6, which is 48. Because it's the chain rule. G of x was raised to an exponent, so we took the derivative of the exponent. But then we've got to multiply by the derivative of what was inside that exponent, which in this case was g of x. It's like when we've got x cubed minus 1 squared. You bring down the 2, you keep the x cubed minus 1, but then you multiply by 3x squared. <clears throat> okay, so we'll get a few more examples. Let's look at another table. First example is exactly the same. h of x is f of x plus g of x. So h prime of 2 here would be f prime of 2 plus g prime of 2, which for this table of values, f prime of 2 is negative 1. g prime of 2 is 2. So that value is positive 1. H of x is g of x over f of x. That's our quotient rule. Uh, notice that I flipped it. G is on top, f is on the bottom. So you've got to be careful with that. So low d high f of x times g prime of x minus high d low g of x 
six times f prime of x all over rho squared f of x squared. So h prime of 5 is, um, I'm not going to write out the f of 5 d prime of 5 stuff. I'm just going to get the values off the table. So f of 5 is 1, g prime of 5 is negative 3 halves, g of 5 is 3, f prime of 5 is 1 half over f of 5 is 1 squared. So we've got negative 3 halves minus 3 halves over 1. And so that is negative 6 halves or uh, negative 3. Yeah, it's the normal course. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you still have to do the, the whole quotient rule. Um, now, this one may have, yeah, I think this one would have worked out. Um, G prime of x over f prime of x, that would have ended up giving you negative 3, but I think that's just plain too I mean, you've got to apply the rules just like you would apply the rules if they were expressions in there. So if you, if you have a quotient of two functions, then when you take the derivative, you've got to use the, the quotient rule. <clears throat> now, the, the reason why the first one is just f prime plus g prime, because that's like when we have x squared plus x cubed. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. We just add those together. Um, okay. The next one, h of x is equal to negative 2 g of x plus 4 f of x. That's a linear combination of functions. So we've got the scalar multiples that we bring down. So h prime of x is equal to negative 2 times g prime of x plus 4 times f prime of x. So h prime of 1 is equal to negative 2 times g prime of 1 is 2 plus 4 times f prime of 1 is negative 1, so we've got negative 4 plus negative 4, which is negative 8. And the last one is a big time chain rule. Okay, h prime of x here is equal to the derivative of the outside, we start with g, we don't change anything else, times the derivative of the inside, so that's f prime of 2x, we don't change anything else, and then there's still another inside, so we have to multiply by the derivative of that, the derivative of 2x is 2. Okay, this is more like one of our trig ones, where we've got like sine cubed of 2x, okay, exponent trig angle, same kind of deal here. Outside function, inside function, function inside the function. Three steps. Okay, so h prime of 3, I am going to write out plugging this one in uh, because there's a lot of stuff going on with this one. First of all, I'm going to move that 2 to the front. Uh, g prime of f of 2 times 3 is 6 times f prime of 2 times 3 again is 6. So let's get the values off the table here. f of 6 is 3. f prime of 6 is 2. Prime of 3 is 1 half 
So the final answer is two. The final answer is two. Most people get a little hung up on this one right here, this composition. B prime of f of six. And you start with the f of six, that's equal to three. Now it's not three times all this other stuff, it's it's still within the b prime, so it's b prime of three because you're about to do that one. Just to make sure we got it, we're going to do a couple more with you. I'm going to do this one and then I'm going to let you try the ones on the back. And then the ones on the back with Lucy. Okay. <clears throat> um, so, again, and the reason why they're handwritten is because the worksheet was really, really boring with them. Um, because the first one was always the sum and they never really gave any more complex examples. So, anyways, that's why I kind of wrote them in the sum. So, h prime of 3 when h of x is f of x plus g of x. So, f prime of 3 is negative 3 halves plus g prime of 3 is negative 3 halves. So, we have negative 6 halves, which is negative 6. No, negative three. Stuck on the six there. <clears throat> negative six times is negative six. So it's negative three. My brain was saying negative three. My hand was writing negative six. All right. Um, if h of x is negative three times g of x cubed, h prime of x is equal to keep the scalar multiple in front, bring down your exponent, Keep the inside function the same, subtract 1 from your exponent, multiply by the derivative of what was on the inside, so times g prime of x. So h prime of 2 is equal to negative 9 times uh, g of 2 is 5, g prime of 2 is negative 3 halves. Uh, so not a very nice number here. We've got uh, 27 over 2 times 25. Mm. Um, I'm going to go to my calculator. Oh, I'm sorry. I just threw that up trying to do it in my head. Uh, 27 times 25. I'm not going to give you absurd numbers like this. 675 over 2. This was because Ms. Redmond made up this problem off the top of her head and didn't really look at the numbers before she did it. <clears throat> Alright, next one is a product, f of x times g of x. So h prime of x is equal to, now that scalar multiple, we need to put it in the front and we need to put parentheses after. Okay, because I'm going to look at <clears throat> The product rule here with just f of x, g of x, so we've got to put parentheses. So first times derivative of the second plus derivative of the first times the second. So h prime of 4, got the 24 in there. h prime of 4 is equal to 5 times f of 4 is 1. G prime of 4 is negative 1. F prime of 4 is 0. Times G of 4, which is 2. So we've got, uh, that's 0, 5 times negative 1, negative 5. Alright, one more chain rule here. H prime of X is equal to, keep that negative out front. Negative is like negative 1, it's a scalar multiple. On the derivative of the outside, times the derivative of the inside. So H prime of 1 is equal to negative F prime of G of 1 times g prime of 1 